Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is the story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story. Client called me at night and demanded that I come and fix her laptop. I did not come. The second story. Boss fired our daddy, so his synovia ruined the reputation of the company. Write bad reviews and tell the reporter about this case. And the first story is... I'm 200 miles away and have no internet access. Well, find some. Expletive deleted, internet, and fix it now. I've been working my way up the food chain at the little IT company I'm with. The clients I deal with I treat much like I did customers at Starbucks. Compassionate, caring, empathetic, blah blah, good customer service, blah blah. And this has put me in good favor with all of our clients that I've dealt with. One in particular is a mid-sized regional company that specializes in giving sociopaths a lucrative opportunity to exploit people less strong-willed than them. I'll let you determine the field. They're not my primary station, but I help out there when the ticket queue gets overloaded. We can call them Slime Co. Most of the folks there that I deal with while slimy in general are quite pleasant towards me. I'm the cheerful guy with the laptop who doesn't make promises and just does what needs to be done. Unlike the three other burnt out techs stationed there who make hard deadlines they never meet, but there's one woman here who is beyond help. Ever see that episode of Kitchen Nightmares or whatever it was that had the husband and wife pair? That the wife was just completely convinced she could do no wrong and that everyone was out to get her? That's this woman. Not literally, but a bit for bit duplicate. She's a problem for everyone, and my pleasant demeanor doesn't mean SH to her because I'm just trying to ruin her life. I avoid her like the plague because I have more important things to deal with than her 15 tickets about the same GDBS that has been resolved over and over again. We'll just call her the Harpy from here on out. This past Saturday the 4th, I'm up at my friend's cottage for the long weekend when I get a call from a number I don't recognize. I answer because at 2am it could be important, something could be wrong at home, or with my family or what have you. Me, groggily, uh, hello? The Harpy. Finally someone effing answers. Aren't you guys on call or whatever? Me. I'm sorry, who is this? TH. Who the F do you think it is? It's the Harpy from Slime Co. My GD laptop keeps restarting. Me. How did you get this number? TH. Why does that effing matter? You're IT. You're on call. That's how it works. Fix my effing laptop or I'll have your job. Me. This is a personal cell phone and I'm not on call ever. We don't have on call support. I gotta find out what kind of sneaky underhanded tactics this B went through to get my number though. TH. If I can get a hold of you, you're on call. And this laptop you gave me isn't working. It keeps restarting and I need to do my effing job. Me. I'm 200 miles away. I have no internet access so I couldn't remote in if I wanted to. And it's a holiday weekend. Slime Co. is closed until Tuesday. TH. Well I work off hours and I have work that needs to get done. So get in your effing car and find some internet and fix my effing laptop. Me. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. I'm not going out looking for an internet connection at 2 in the morning on a holiday weekend. Just because you decided you need to work right this second. I'm not even a dedicated Slime Co. technician. I'm only there when support is needed, and I haven't been in the branch since last week. TH. I don't give an SH. You work for us and you will fix my laptop right now. I don't care if you have to drive all the way here to do it. Me. You know what? You're right. I just need you to submit a ticket so I can get to it in the system and I'll head right over to the nearest Starbucks. TH. That's what I effing thought. You know, I shouldn't have to jump through these kinds of hoops to get SH done around here. You should just be grateful you have a job at all, you effing dimwit. Me. Yep, you're right. Go ahead and place the ticket, and I'll head right on over to Starbucks and remote in, and get this all taken care of for you right away. TH. Good. She hangs up. I immediately put my phone on silence. My laptop is sitting comfortably in its docking station back at the main office, 200 miles away. The nearest Starbucks is about 40 miles away, and I go back to bed about 10 feet away. I check my phone in the morning. 61 missed calls, 14 voicemails, 239 emails. Alternating between personal attacks fired off like text messages and submitted tickets. Funny how her laptop was stable long enough to submit around 50 tickets, and another 180-ish emails. I blocked her number after that. I got into work today, and my boss had a similar situation. She kept calling his phone long into the night. Boss, you're nicer than I was. I just told her to enjoy her holiday weekend and hung up. I wonder if Starbucks is still hiring. An update. Slime Co. brought in the lawyers, and the excrement hit the fan. My boss spoke with upper management yesterday, 
And today when I came into that office, as I normally do on Wednesday, I was immediately escorted to the boardroom by two security guards. The president's CFO, chairman of the board, Slime Co's lawyer, our IT firm's lawyer, and my boss were all at the table. I found out my boss had threatened to file a proper criminal suit as a result of TH's behavior on my behalf. It was explained to my boss and I that TH, while an obvious problem, is a high earner for the company and they would not fire her. However, it was discovered through an internal investigation that she had, in fact, gotten the numbers of all the techs out of the CFO's BlackBerry. We don't know how she got into the BlackBerry, but what we do know is that the CFO left his BlackBerry unattended, which is a serious security compromise, and also a violation of the contract between the company and my IT firm. Some very strong words were exchanged between Slime Co's officials and my boss. The lawyer agreed that it was, in fact, a serious breach of contract, leaving any data available to unauthorized users and it was made clear that the contract in place would be terminated at the end of the meeting. It was later explained to me that given the nature of the breach, we'd basically have an all-hands-on-deck situation, where every available tech would report to Slime Co. and start pulling servers, switches, and any other leased equipment. Estimated time of dismantlement was about two and a half hours. There was also the phrase wood chipper for hard drives thrown in there. I don't know if this was literal or a figure of speech. For the next two hours, I was not allowed to leave the room. My boss, his lawyer, and Slime Co. renegotiated the contract on the spot. A 36% price hike, increased security improvements, and a couple other things that went right over my head. The lawyer then pointed out that I was still well within my rights to, and asked if I would be seeking legal action. I asked what my options were. Before he even got it out of his mouth, Slime Co. started talking about a settlement to keep me from going any further. Without going into too many specifics there, a check was cut and immediately cash because they ain't gonna play me for no fool. The harpy was put on an actual probation. My boss gave me the rest of the week off, billed to Slime Co. so I can have an actual vacation, and I'm no longer going to do any service at Slime Co. Not the outcome I expected at all. Unfortunately, it's an instance where the company is big enough to need multiple IT guys, and yet too small to have a proper HR department, and she's got these guys so buttered up that she's competent they wouldn't fire her. The next story is... My dad was let off from his job in transportation because of his SH boss, and me and my siblings destroyed the five-star reviews they had. A little bit of info I think might be useful before getting into the story. My family and I are not native to the country we live in. I came to the country as an immigrant along with my parents, but my siblings were born here. My dad has been working in the transportation company for 10 years now, which means all of my teenage years and a few years into my early 20s have been slaving away for them, coming home after 10 to 12, sometimes even 13 hour shifts, barely giving me time to spend with him and my siblings. My dad got the SH routes for his job, and every other week of the month, aka two out of four weeks, he takes a route that's supposed to be taken by three people at the very least, but nope, it all fell on his shoulders. Lastly, I'd like to mention my dad was about 35 when he started to work with them, so the math is easy to add up. Now, on to the pettiness. My dad recently bought a new car, and the one we bought it from apparently failed to mention a few defects in the description, and of course we had to send it to a workshop to check what was wrong with it. Come a few days later, they said X and Y was wrong, and needed to be bought and could be fixed at home, so we did. Then something else came out and we sent it there again. This time it had two long lines scratched at the back of the car to the point of stupidity at how they didn't notice it, and thus failed to inform us. Fine, we went to talk to them and nothing came of it as far as I can remember. A few days after my dad and my younger brother, also in his 20s, went today to talk to them about the incident, having them to either pay us back what we spent, or we'd raise a complaint because of the poor service they provided us. To certain degrees this is possible, which was the case here. My dad was wearing his work attire as he only has time a few hours before his work starts at 10 a.m. The employer at the workshop, after some time, became hostile towards my dad and came up to his face, pushed him and even hit him on the head, when my dad did nothing other than rightfully expressing his annoyance at the poor service. After my dad came back home from work, he told us his boss, now ex-boss, had let him off of work. At first, I didn't believe it, and then it clicked that he wasn't joking. Apparently it was, to quote my father, it was because the employer got physical with me. While I was wearing the work attire with its logo, and instead I could have gone there after work. First off, how is it my dad's fault for someone else being physical with? Secondly, B, how the F can my dad go there after work hours when he works 10 to 12 hour shifts? Because you refuse to split his roots on three people, as you're effing supposed to do. So my brother and I thought, you want to be petty in a complete SH bag? Fine, we'll give you pettiness. 
The first of my younger brothers went to the local newspaper and got in touch with a reporter. They're at the ready to write about how buddy buddy my dad's ex-boss and the employer at the workshop is. And my brother will be going to the workshop tomorrow. And tell them either you pay us back what you took from us, or we'll release the entire thing you did to us to the local newspapers. Not gonna lie, I hope for the latter because I want at least some sort of justice for their absolute BS. My second younger brother, and the first one, got their friends and my second younger brother got his friends on Discord. Mind you, he's in quite a lot of servers, to take a little online stroll to the workshop's public online review page, and gave their thoughts on the service with a fabulous one-star review as their guest. From what I heard from one of my brothers, it took the workshop 10 years to get the review to 5 out of 5 stars, and the pettiness and anger of us took it down to somewhere along the lines of 2.9 stars within 5-6 to six hours. It may not have been much, but by God did it feel good to ruin their 10-year efforts for a 5 out of 5 down to 2.9 out of 5 within a few hours as they deserve, and all of this could have been avoided if they had thought with their SH heads, instead of behaving like stuck-up rats. BSH towards my family, expect to be paid back with the same vibe, sometimes even tenfold. As they say, what goes around comes around. Sorry if this post, more like rant, was long and all over the place, and sorry if it wasn't a satisfying petty revenge, but I just needed to get this off my chest as a foreigner in this country, and having had enough of me and my family being treated like SH. Update. My dad's ex-boss had been continuously trying to reach my dad via text and calls. My dad refused to answer the calls, and only replied by text once saying busy at the moment. And the ex-boss texted back saying call me back when you have time then. What I failed to mention in the post is that when my dad came home after being let off, he came home with a termination letter, which he did not sign, and is still remaining to be unsigned. So the ex-boss will not be getting that signature anytime soon. What was interesting to know is how the brother of my dad's ex-boss and another co-worker of the company fought for my dad the moment they found out he was let off wrongfully. We feel deeply touched by that, and it actually made us feel like my dad wasn't there for nothing, and that someone actually cared for him there. What's more is how my brother told me about how the local newspapers involved, as y'all might already know, had one of the reporters wanting to set up a meeting with the ex-boss about the event that occurred tomorrow, and I can't wait to see where things go. Then there's the workshop and the employers there. When my brother went there again today, they begged him to take down the one-star reviews, that they'd fix the car free of charge. But they again begged for him to take them down afterwards while apologizing like crazy. As for some of the things that my dad had to endure while working there consists of barely, of it all being paid for overtime which starts at 7pm. My dad comes home between 9pm and 11pm. There were times where they had given him overweight cargo beyond the permissible weight limit, which would risk his safety even more, because the cargo he had, it was a four-wheel transport car that could carry a few tons if I'm not mistaken, could easily topple over the car. Lastly for this update I'd like to mention how my dad said that if he'd go back it'll be on his own terms, that he'll not go back unless the last work hour ends at 4pm, and nothing else, and getting fairly paid, as he was being underpaid for years. I hope you enjoyed these stories, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button.